Welcome to Unit 15, Video 3, Le Chatelier's Principle. By the end of this video, you should understand what it means for the equilibrium position to shift in response to a stress. You should be able to predict the direction in which the equilibrium position will shift when subjected to a particular stress. And you should be able to predict the effects on the concentration of reactants and concentration of products when a system is subjected to a stress. Le Chatelier's principle tells us that if a change is imposed on a system at equilibrium, the position of the equilibrium will shift in a direction that tends to reduce that stress. In other words, if we stress the system, we actually disrupt the equilibrium. When re equilibrium is reestablished, it will be at a new and different position. So what are some ways we can stress an equilibrium system? We can change the temperature. We can change the pressure, or we can change the concentration of a reactant or a product. So what does it mean to shift the equilibrium? Well, recall that the equilibrium position is the set of concentrations of reactants and products at equilibrium. So take this system. The equilibrium position would be the concentration of A and B and C and D all at equilibrium. However, if we stress this system, it will fall out of equilibrium, and when equilibrium is reestablished, the concentrations of A, B, C, and D will be different. For instance, if we shift the equilibrium position to the right, this means that we're increasing the concentration of the products and decreasing the concentration of the reactants. The equilibrium position has shifted so that we have made more product and used up more reactant. On the other hand, if we shift the equilibrium position to the left, we're doing the opposite. Here we're decreasing product because they're being used to make more reactant. Our new equilibrium position will have more reactant than before and less product than before. So let's look at each of the three possible stresses we talked about in the previous slide and see how they affect an equilibrium position. First, let's look at concentration. When we change the concentration of a reactant or a product by adding it to the system, the equilibrium position will shift in the direction that lowers the concentration of that component. On the other hand, if we remove a component, if we decrease the concentration of a reactant or product, the equilibrium position will shift in the direction that increases the concentration of that component. Taking this system again, if we increase the concentration of A or B, the equilibrium position will shift to use up that extra A and B. Our new equilibrium position then will have more C and D than before, and the amount of A and B will have decreased since we added some, but it's hard to say where it will actually end up since we added some and then some got used up. But most importantly, our new equilibrium position will have more C and D. On the other hand, if we add C and D, our equilibrium position will shift to use up some of that extra C and D, creating more A and B than we had before. In each of these cases, the equilibrium position has shifted away from what you add. On the other hand, if we remove some A and B, decrease this concentration, the equilibrium position will shift to replace some of what we've removed, thereby using up C and D to make more A and B. Likewise, if we remove some C and D, our equilibrium position will shift towards C and D so that we can replace some of what we've removed, thereby decreasing the concentration of A and B. In summary, it shifts toward what you remove. So it shifts away from what you add and towards what you remove. Now let's look at the effect of temperature on equilibrium position. First, it's important to note that temperature changes are the only factor that will actually change the value of K, the equilibrium constant. Changing the concentrations will not change the value of K because the new ratio of concentrations will match the old ratio of concentrations. However, temperature changes will not create the same ratio of reactants to products as we originally had. So when we change the temperature, 
For an endothermic reaction, adding heat to the system will cause the equilibrium position to shift towards the products. This will increase the value of K because our denominator is getting smaller and our numerator is getting bigger. For an exothermic reaction, adding heat or energy will cause the equilibrium position to shift towards the reactants, thereby decreasing K because we're decreasing the numerator and increasing the denominator. What's important to remember is that increasing the temperature will cause both the forward and the reverse reaction rates to increase. Let's look at temperature effects more closely. Recall that for an endothermic reaction, we can actually write energy as a reactant because it's going into the system. Therefore, using the same rules we used for concentration, if we increase the amount of energy, the equilibrium position will shift away from what you add, thereby increasing the concentration of C and D and decreasing the concentration of A and B. On the other hand, if you decrease the amount of energy, the equilibrium position will shift towards what you took away, thereby increasing the concentration of A and B and decreasing the concentration of C and D. For an exothermic reaction, recall that we can write energy as a product because it's being released from the reaction system. Therefore, just as before, if we add energy to the system, we will shift the equilibrium position away from what we added, increasing the concentration of A and B and decreasing the concentration of C and D. Likewise, if we decrease the energy of the system, the equilibrium position will shift towards what we take away, thereby decreasing the concentration and of A and B and increasing the concentration of C and D. Finally, let's look at pressure. Pressure is a bit different in its effects than temperature and concentration. First, pressure changes only apply to systems with gases involved. Since aqueous solutions have fairly constant pressure, changing the pressure of the system will not affect the equilibrium position of an aqueous system. However, if we change the pressure on a gaseous system, the equilibrium position will be affected. When the pressure of the system is increased, the equilibrium position will shift so as to lower the total number of moles of gas in the system. By lowering the number of moles of gas, we will relieve some of the pressure. Recall that the pressure is directly proportional to the number of moles of gas. Likewise, when the pressure of a system is decreased, the equilibrium position will shift so as to increase the number of moles of gas in the system. Looking at this more closely, Take this system here. You might recall that this is the Haber process. If we look at the reactants here, we have a total of four moles of gas, one mole of N2 and three moles of H2. In the products, we have a total of two moles of gas, two moles of NH3. Here, if we increase the pressure on the system by decreasing the volume, the equilibrium position will shift to the right because the right-hand side of this equation shows fewer moles of gas. If we decrease the number of total moles of gas, we'll be able to relieve some of this extra pressure. Our new equilibrium position will have more NH3 than before and less N2 and H2 than before. If we decrease the pressure, the equilibrium position will shift towards the side with more moles of gas. The system is able to actually make more reactant because there's less pressure in the system. Therefore, the new equilibrium position will have less NH3 and more N2 and H2 than before. Notice these directional shifts are only true for this reaction because this particular reaction has fewer moles of gaseous product than reactant. Had there been fewer moles of gas in the reactants than in the products, the shift directions would be the opposite. Let's look at an example together. Here you're given an equation with energy already written as a product, so we know this is an exothermic reaction. First, we're asked what effect will increasing the concentration of CH3COO- have on the equilibrium position of the reaction. Since we're increasing the concentration of CH3COO-, the equilibrium system will want to use up that excess product by making more reactant. Therefore, our equilibrium position will shift left. Since the equilibrium position is shifting left, the concentration of CH3COOH 
will increase. Looking at the next question, here we're, we're asked what effect will lowering the temperature have on the equilibrium position. So here we can think about this as decreasing the amount of energy. Therefore, the equilibrium position will want to shift in the direction that releases more energy. Therefore, our equilibrium position will shift right. Since our equilibrium position is shifting right, the concentration of CH3COOH will decrease because it's being used up to make more product. Finally, we're asked what effect adding 6 molar HCl will have on the equilibrium position. Recall that when HCl is put in water, it dissociates to produce H plus and Cl minus ions. Therefore, this question is really asking what happens when we increase the concentration of H+. Since we're increasing the concentration of a product, the reaction is going the system is going to use up that extra product, so the equilibrium position will shift left. Since the equilibrium position is shifting left, the concentration of CH3COOH will increase because more of it is being produced. Here's one to try on your own. Pause the video here and try to answer these questions. When you come back, I'll reveal the answers. Welcome back. Here's what you should have gotten. That brings us to the end of this video. Let's review our goals. First, we looked at what it means for an equilibrium position to shift in response to a, st a stress either increasing the amount of reactant and decreasing the amount of product, or increasing the amount of product and decreasing the amount of reactant present at equilibrium. Then we looked at how to predict the direction in which the equilibrium position will shift when subjected, subjected to stresses, such as changes in concentration, temperature, and pressure. And finally, we learned how to predict the effects on the concentration of reactants and products when these shifts occur.